honey, if you haven't met her already. Okay, so, and then I also purchased the Grande Lash Lash Enhancing Serum. It didn't really work for me. I didn't really notice a huge difference, so I moved on to another Lash Enhancing Serum. I ended up giving that one to my mom, so I hope it works for her. And then, in August, I went into the store and I purchased Olaplex. The, well, I had already purchased Olaplex in the past, but the shampoo and conditioner. So the number four and the number five. To be honest, it has four out of five stars. To be honest, I don't think it's 100% necessary. I think that Olaplex, like the actual bonding treatment, is really, really good, and I do recommend that. But I don't think that the shampoo and conditioner or anything like that totally wowed me. Uh, I still have them in my shower because I'm trying to get through them, but I'm like not enjoying getting through them. You know what I mean? Like I don't think it's anything fantastic. I have other shampoos and conditioner that's, that I much prefer over the Olaplex one. And then I purchased the Cover FX High Performance Setting Spray. Did not like that at all. I am kind of finding that I don't really like setting sprays. I think I just don't really like my face to feel tacky and a lot of the ones that I've tried as of late have been very tacky. I don't like that feeling. So if you guys have any recommendations, definitely let me know. But I think I actually ended up returning that Cover FX um, setting spray because it's just like, I didn't like it. Then in August, I purchased the Drunk Elephant TLC Sukari Baby Facial. This is not what I was expecting at all. So many people speak so highly of this product that I was expecting to be wowed and I just wasn't. Um, I know I'm in the minority there. A lot of people really enjoy this product and think it's like the best product ever for getting dead skin and making your face look nice and radiant and soft. And uh, <laughs> it just didn't really work for me. <coughs> um, <clears throat> it just... I just wasn't wowed. Like, it's okay, but I'm like, meh. Uh, I much prefer the much cheaper, <laughs> ordinary, um, what's it called? I will try to put a picture right here. I'll put it down below so you guys can find it. It's like a red mask, and it's much more intense than the Drunk Elephant Baby Facial, and I think it works a lot better, too. Then I purchased the Drunk Elephant TLC Glycolic Face Serum. And this would have been the second time that I purchased it. I think that it's a really good product. I do see a difference with that. Now, a true, from the dermatologist, Retin-A, that's like a 1% or 1.5% is going to be much more intense. Um, and I think have better results. But I do use this off and on with my Retin-A. So one night I'll use my Retin-A. The next night I'll use the TLC, uh, Framboo's Glycolic Serum. And I'll switch back and forth. Um, because I definitely don't want to use the Retin-A every night because my skin will start to dry and flake. But I do think that uh, the combination of those two is really nice. But if you have more sensitive skin or you can't, you're not ready for a Retin-A just yet, then the Drunk Elephant is a good option. I also purchased the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Moisturizer. Uh, I remember my mom purchasing this and she was like not that wild about it, but I really like it. I do feel like it makes my face look very radiant and plump and I don't know more even toned I guess I could say uh, I've had pretty good luck with this drunk elephant poly protein moisturizer so uh, I still have it and I use it every other night probably and I think that it's a, a great moisturizer uh, the Sephora Collection Pro drawing blending brush this is something that I purchased not for eyeshadow, which I think some people do. I purchased it for highlighter. I wanted something that was small enough so that I could highlight in more precise areas because I don't really like to use a big brush for highlighting. I don't want highlight all over my cheek because then I just look greasy, or at least I will in an hour once my oil production kind of catches up. And so uh, this brush is great for precise highlighting. That's what I use it for, and I think it's fantastic. So I would highly recommend that if you're looking for a brush for more precision, precision work on your cheeks. And then uh, Jouer Cosmetics Powder Highlighter in the color Citrine. This is one of my favorite purchases throughout the entire year. I absolutely love it. I think it looks beautiful on the skin. Unfortunately, that's not what I'm wearing today, but it is very similar actually to the one that I'm wearing today. I'm so congested, you guys, I can't handle it. I need to get through this quickly. I purchased the Jouer Cosmetics Blush Bouquet in like the blush duos in the color Adore. It was a matte, warm, dusty peach. 
and a shimmering warm <clears throat> blush. One's more shimmy, one's more matte, and then you put, you, well, I always put them together. And I think that it's pretty. However, after this, I purchased the Charlotte Tilbury blush in Ecstasy, which is also a peachy blush. And that's the one that I prefer over the Jouer one. So I am wearing the Charlotte Tilbury Ecstasy blush today, and I, I seriously wear it every single day. So, but I'll get to that, I think, later on in this video. Hourglass Caution Extreme Mascara. Uh, at first, I really loved it, and then I kind of felt like, eh, it didn't, it wasn't, like, it was definitely volumizing, but it wasn't giving me, like, it wasn't doing my lashes justice, especially after I started using a serum and letting them, like, really grow and get long. I didn't feel like the Hourglass Mascara was showing how long that they really were. So, it's good, but it's not my favorite. The Way Wave Spray, I purchased September 1st. I really like that stuff. I didn't use it today because my hair is freshly washed, but I would use that on like second or third day hair just to give my hair more texture and more peasiness. And so if you have like a shorter haircut like me, then I definitely recommend that Way Wave Spray. I think you'll like it. <clears throat> Tatcha the Silk Canvas. I hated this primer. Like I... I just don't understand the hype. To me, it didn't really, like it made your skin feel smooth, but it didn't really blur my pores or fill in my pores or anything like that. It definitely didn't make my makeup last any longer. I just really did not care for this at all. And um, so yeah, not my favorite. Uh, Isle of Paradise Over It Magic Self Tan Eraser. I purchased this after a self tan catastrophe and it didn't do it like nothing at all. So the idea about it behind it is that you're supposed to spray it on your self tan and then you should be able to like kind of wipe it away with a washcloth and it just didn't really work at all. Um, <clears throat> I think it would probably work if you were like on the last day of your self tan, you've had it on for a week and it's getting all like really patchy. Then I think it would work for putting it on there and rubbing it off. But I was more wanting something to like totally erase uh, like, you know, when you get like orange wrists and things like that on a fresh tan that had just developed and for that it was, it didn't work at all. Uh, I purchased the Bosha black charcoal like blotting linens. I use those all the time. And then I also purchased the Ola Hendrickson cold plunge pore mask. This was okay. I have other masks that I prefer over this one, but this one's just kind of fun because it's bright blue. Um, it does feel very cooling on the skin, which is kind of a nice calming sensation. Uh, I just don't know if I, I have other masks that I have more like visible results after even just one use than this one. Another thing that I purchased is, and this is in September, was the Milk Makeup Kush Fiber Brow Gel. This is in the color Haze. I actually do really like this. I think that this is better than the Benefit one, the Gimme Brow. I think it gives your brow hairs more volume and it does make your brows look fuller than they really are and I think the color is really good for us blondes. And then this is when I got super excited because I found the Too Faced Born This Way uh, concealer. I got it in the shade Vanilla and I absolutely love this concealer. I still do. It's what I'm wearing on my under eyes today. I have really, really dry under eyes and to me this one just works a lot better for my under eye area than some of the other concealers that I've tried this year. And it's pretty full coverage too. So I do really enjoy this concealer. I highly recommend this. And then I found the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Palette. I actually did a whole review on this palette and I loved it. I won't go crazy over it just simply because it's not available anymore, but I use that palette almost every single day. And then I finally got my hands on Charlotte Tilbury's Matte Revolution Lipstick in the color Pillow Talk. I absolutely love this lipstick. I think it's the perfect color. I love the texture of it. I love the formula. It lasts a decent amount of time on my lips. And I've really been enjoying using regular bullet lipsticks lately. So this is definitely a win. If you haven't picked up any Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks or specifically this color in Pillow Talk, I highly recommend it. I think that it just is like beautiful. And then I, this was in September still, so I was still really tan. Uh, I tried the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation in the color 8, which was a perfect match for me at the time, and now not so much. So I haven't worn this foundation in quite some time, 
but I did really like it. It's more of a medium coverage. It has a pretty natural finish. It just looks really great on the skin. And I did feel like it was more blurring than some of the other foundations that I've tried. It lasted a pretty decent amount of time on my skin as well. And so I did really like it. I just can't use the color that I have right now. And then I also tried the Charlotte Tilbury Hot Lips Lipstick in the color Kim KW. This is like a really light nude and I really wasn't a fan of this one. It just always made my lips look really dry for some reason and like cakey. It just wasn't the most flattering lipstick on my lips. Um, but, you know, you win some, you lose some. I bought another Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. You guys know how I feel about this. And then I purchased a single shadow, which I haven't purchased any single shadows in a really long time, but this was the Marc Jacobs Beauty Omega Gel Eyeshadow in the color Daddy-O. It's a matte chocolate brown, and I use this one a lot. If I just want like one color all over my lid and into my crease, this is what I use, and I think it's very flattering on, like the color goes really well with my eye color. It makes my bluish greenish eyes pop which is kind of strange for like just a regular brown eyeshadow but I really really like it it lasts a really long time too and I think it's great yes they're expensive for single shadows but at the same time like this is something that I'll seriously use because I just grab that one eyeshadow and then I pop it all over my lid and it's not um, like it's really easy to use so it's kind of like one of those daily go-to eyeshadows I tried, well, actually, this was actually something that I thought I was purchasing the Marc Jacobs Fine Liner, but instead I accidentally purchased the Magic Marker Precision like Liquid Eyeliner, so I ended up returning that because I did not want that liquid eyeliner. I wanted one for tight lining. I also purchased Fenty Beauty's uh, foundation in the color 210. I needed a little bit of a darker color than the one that I had before. I previously used the color 190, and so I brought I bought 210. It says that it's for medium skin with neutral undertones. Uh, to me, I think it does have more of a yellow undertone, more so than just a neutral. It is the foundation that I'm wearing right now. I got some like weird shadows going on in this room right now. Maybe that will help. Uh, so it is the foundation that I'm wearing right now, and I do really like this foundation. Nine times out of ten, when you guys ask me what foundation I'm wearing, it's Fenty. And then October came around because this is when I discovered Pat McGrath lipsticks. And somebody told me, and I didn't know this, and I don't know why I didn't look, but somebody told me that they're not cruelty-free. And I was like, surely that's a mistake because I feel like newer brands – and Pat McGrath is a newer brand, if I'm not mistaken. At least it's new to Sephora. Newer brands, like, why would you be testing on animals? It just doesn't make sense to me. And so, like, it didn't even cross my mind that a newer brand would do that because it just seems so ridiculous and, like, backwards, you know? Uh, but anyways, so after I purchased all of these lipsticks and fell in love with them, obviously, somebody told me that, and I, was, I looked it up, and sure enough, they are. They do uh, sell in China, so... That was kind of frustrating to me. But nonetheless, I did purchase these Pat McGrath Matte Trance Lipstick in Christy, which is a perfect everyday nude for me. Uh, and then I also purchased 1995, which is another everyday nude. It's just a little bit darker than Christy, and I wear those two all the time. I also purchased Elson. It's a Elson. It's a blue red, and that was um, like in Instagram stories, if you guys asked me what red lipstick I was wearing, nine times out of ten, it was that color. And then finally, I went back and I exchanged that eyeliner from Marc Jacobs, uh, the liquid one, for the blacker fine liner. And I love that for tight lining. I tight line every single day. Uh, it's just when you like get the upper water line so that your there's no like blank space between your lashes and... Um, like that's it, I guess. Like there's no blank space in there. So it just makes your lashes look thicker at the base. Um, and it just defines your eye a little bit more. So I recommend tight lining. I do it every day. Uh, and I really like the Marc Jacobs Fine Liner to tight line with. If you guys have any other recommendations for good tight lining eyeliners, then let me know. But for right now, I'm really happy with the Marc Jacobs one. I purchased the IGK Beach Club Texture Spray. This is a really great spray if you want like your hair to have some more volume and some more like just beachy texture, kind of like make it look more blown up. 
So I don't have it in my hair today, but if I did, it would be a lot more like voluminous. And so uh, that one, it does give your hair a little bit of texture. So I don't like to use it on like freshly washed clean hair. I use it on like day two or three, um, you know, day four, when I know that I'm getting closer to a day where I'm going to wash my hair because I don't love brushing out my hair with that kind of product in it because I feel like it's just very, it's not very gentle on your hair to brush through your hair with something like that in it. It's like putting hairspray in your hair and then brushing through, you know, you just feel like you're breaking off all of your hair. So uh, I do like that product. It smells like pineapples and like the ocean, <laughs> but uh, I don't use it on like freshly washed hair. Purchased another Pat McGrath lipstick in the color Omi, which is a mid-tone rose. That's a really good one. Uh, and then Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic Blush in Ecstasy. I have worn this nearly every single day since I purchased it on October 22nd, or 27th, sorry. So I think that this blush formula is amazing. I love that it's a little bit of shimmer, just enough to give you like a nice gleam on your cheeks, but it's not anything like glittery or too highlighty. And the color is just enough, so you're not gonna put too much color on your cheeks, but at the same time, they're pigmented. I just, I can't say enough good things about these Charlotte Tilbury blushes. And this color Ecstasy is just like the perfect peach blush ever. I also purchased another Charlotte Tilbury uh, lip liner in the color Pillow Talk. I've purchased that before in the past and I really enjoyed it and went through the entire thing. So I purchased that again. And actually Pillow Talk is what I have on my lips right now. I'm wearing Pillow Talk on my lips with this Fenty chewed up lip gloss in the color Fussy. So this is the new Fenty gloss and I really like that combination. Uh, and then I purchased the L'Occitane Cleansing and Softening like Almond uh, Gel, like Shower Gel, uh, along with the Almond uh, Body Oil. And I really do like both of those. They, they're very luxurious feeling. So when you feel like you deserve like a really luxurious bath or shower, then I would highly recommend those products. They feel very expensive and um, they also make your skin feel very, very soft as well. Only thing I will say is that I feel like the cleansing gel, the shower gel, you can go through that real quick if you're not careful. So um, I like both of those products though. And then I realized that the Bite Beauty lip pencils had gone on sale and I really like those lip liners. So I purchased two. I bought um, one in the color 20, which is a beige nude. And then I bought the color 18, which is a warmer nude. And I wear both of those all the time. I've actually had 18 before in the past and went through the entire lip liner. That doesn't happen often, so that's how you know that you really like something. Uh, another couple of Pat McGrath lipsticks, one in the color Flesh 3. This was a brown, described as a brown rose, but to me it was more of like a burgundy red-ish color. I thought it was really flattering on my skin tone because I'm not so tan in the winter, and I thought it looked good with my eye color too. So it just really made like everything on my skin, on my face, look really bright. Uh, I really liked that color, and it's not a color that I would usually pick but I was happy that I did. And then Pat McGrath Luxe Trans Lipstick in Donatella. This was a super, uh, it's a little bit more shiny than the matte trans formula, but it's, in my opinion, still matte. It's closer to like a satin finish. And Donatella is a really nice, like uh, pinky, peachy nude color on my skin tone. So I wear that all the time as well. Pat McGrath Lip Gloss it was not like, it was nice, but I would not, not purchase another one. I got it in the color Alienjelic, which was, it looks like a white base and then it has all of these like prismatic uh, glitter particles in it. You can feel the glitter in it. It's not, it's subtle. Like it's not like super gritty, but you can feel it. It's there. And like, it was nice, but it wasn't anything crazy. Like it definitely wasn't worth the $28 spent on it. So I, I just wasn't wowed. Aquis, Aquis, I'm not sure how you say that, but I, I bought one of those wrap and dry like hair turban towels and I use that all the time now. I really like that. I would highly recommend it. Uh, I do think that it's a lot nicer on your neck than using like a big old towel. It's just a lot more comfortable because it's smaller. I bought a Huda Beauty Obsessions eyeshadow palette in the color Topaz. I really like Huda Beauty eyeshadows. I don't really know what it is, guys, but they're just so easy to work with. Like, they're so easy to blend out. Like, you can do some pretty intense looks and look like a professional using Huda Beauty eyeshadows. They're, they're more buildable than a lot of the eyeshadows that are on the market right now. And so I think because of that, they're 
they look more diffused when they're on the eyes. It's, they're easier to blend out. Not so much that they're easier to blend out, but they look blended out already. I don't know. Like, they're just, they're great eyeshadows. I really like that Topaz eyeshadow palette. So then I also purchased the Huda Beauty, the new nude palette. This is a great eyeshadow palette as well. This is just a fun palette. If you're looking for something that's a little bit out of your normal, like neutrals range, even though it's called new nude, they're more like pink and purple colors with like little pops of gold and rose gold here and there. Uh, the shimmers in that palette are really beautiful and they're fun to work with. And again, I just think that the whole palette is very well thought out and it's just, it's really pretty and it's fun and it's easy to use. So for that palette, like I always feel like you can use this color and this color and this color and it's gonna look good. Uh, like all the colors work together very well in that palette. I bought some Cinema Secrets makeup brush cleaner. I really like this stuff when I'm doing like mostly videos and I wanna use the same brush, but I've already used it with like a black eyeshadow and I wanna use it with a purple eyeshadow. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. It's really easy to just swirl your brush in some of that solution, like just kind of tap it out and it'll be dry in like 10 seconds. Way hair oil. This is the oil that I ended up purchasing after the ghost oil. Uh, remember the ghost oil I said was very thick. The way hair oil is super thick. Like it just looks like water coming out. Um, it still obviously feels like an oil and it is an oil, but it's very, very thin. So there are just two different types of oils. This one, it's a little bit more yellow than like totally clear, but it's not amber, like Moroccan oil or something like that. So I have recently started uh, using this hair oil because I had just finished up my ghost oil and I actually really like it. Because it's so thin, I think that like you seriously only need one pump and that's gonna be enough for your whole head. Um, but it's not gonna make your hair like look greasy. It, it does do a good job of making it look shiny and look healthy, but I think it would be really hard to go overboard on this oil, so I like it. I bought a sample size of the Milk Makeup Kush High Volume Mascara, and it was okay. Um, it does smudge a little bit, I noticed, because I have oily eyelids, and my eyelashes are a little bit longer right now. Like, if I look up constantly, like, I'll get the little dots on my eyelids with that mascara. And so I don't love that, but I do think it's really volumizing. The thing about this mascara is even the the, sam the small size, like the deluxe size sample, the one that you can purchase, it is so heavy. Like it's so, the container is so weighted. It feels very luxurious. Like it seems like it would be much more expensive than it really is. But uh, it does do a good job of volumizing. I just don't know if it's like the best mascara in the world for my eyelashes. I bought another um, ADH Brow Wiz in the color Hope. I bought a November Glow Recipes Blueberry Bounce Cleanser. I was just in the mood to try a new cleanser. In the past, I've used like CeraVe cleansers and been totally fine with that. I don't know. I just felt like splurging on a new cleanser, which usually I don't do, but this one was nice. It definitely smells like blueberries. It's a, it's a nice experience when you're washing your face, but I don't know if it's anything special. I don't think that I would purchase it again just because it's just a cleanser. I don't know. It was $34.00. I don't know if it was really worth $34 in my opinion. This, okay. This is one of my favorite purchases throughout the entire year. This is the Lancer The Method Polish. And this is like the one that's more for like acne or blemish control polish. It is so good, you guys. It's very, very, abrasive sounds very bad, but it's, it's, uh, it's definitely an exfoliator. Like it's very, very gritty, but I love that. Like I think that feels so good on the skin and it really feels like you're getting all that nasty, dead, dry skin off of your face. Your face looks very radiant when you're done, and it just, it's a really nice experience to use. Plus, there's a lot, I feel like that is gonna last me forever. There's a lot of product in there, and you only need like the smallest amount. It smells like peppermint, so if you don't like that, then, or if you find that to be irritating, then you're probably not gonna love it, but I think it feels like, it's a very invigorating experience to use that uh, exfoliator. I love it. I ended up buying a GHD uh, hair flattener, hair, what are they called? Hair straightener, flat iron, uh, because I am trying to teach myself how to curl my hair using flat iron. So this is what I did today. I like it just to have like a little bit of bend to it. I don't like it to be super like curly. And so that's kind of what I'm like trying to 
figure out right now. I really like it when it just has a little bit of a bend and it's straight at the ends. And so I did a much better job on this side than I did on this side, but it's okay. I'm learning right now. I've never been good at using a flat iron to curl my hair. I just bought a couple gifts on here. Uh, and then now we're into December. So these are like the last purchases that I made. Uh, the Fenty Gloss Balm in the color Fussy. Well, I purchased that and then, well, I purchased two because I purchased one for me and then one was a gift for my mom. And then I purchased the uh, Marc Jacobs Enamored Hydrating Lip, one in the color One Mom Time for my mom as well. And I also purchased a beauty blender. You guys know how I feel about beauty blenders. Well, I went home, I wrapped the gifts for my mom and that was what Sunny got under the tree. So she not only got like the gift open, but she also got the lip gloss out of there and just totally destroyed it. So that's why now I have two lip glosses of Fussy and one of them looks like this. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so then I had to go back to Sephora and I had to buy another one to, um, give to my mom. And then when I was in there, I ended up just buying that same gloss, but in the color diamond milk as well. So, I wasn't really the biggest fan of the first Fenty Gloss Bomb. I think it was just the color I was kind of like meh about. But I do really like Fussy and Diamond Milk. Diamond Milk looks really good over like just a lip liner and um, that lip gloss. I really like that look. Uh, and then the Fussy looks good over anything. Uh, that one can also be worn on its own and I think it's really pretty. So Fussy is what I'm wearing right now. It's been quite a while since I applied it, but... Uh, I like the applicator on these too. So, I don't know, hopefully you can see it. It's really pretty and it's really comfortable. Uh, I think that the best way to use those lip glosses is just putting on a lip liner, filling in your lips with it, and then putting the gloss on top. I think it's just a really pretty look. And that is it. That is every single thing that I purchased for the entire year. So, yes, I purchased a lot. I had some gifts in there, here and there. Uh, but I do think that overall, it was less than last year. Uh, if you notice, and I didn't say the dates of every single thing I purchased, but pretty much I only purchased like three like big times throughout the year. And that was when they were having sales. So I'm trying to be more conscious of that. So that's one of my goals for 2018 is just to be more conscious of my spending, especially on stuff like that. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope some of you found it helpful at least. Uh, because there was tons of little mini reviews in here. I saw Jacqueline Levine, is, I think that's her name. Uh, she has a YouTube channel here, and I saw that she did a video like this, so I'll link her channel down below so you guys can find her. Uh, I think she was the one who started this, but I'm not 100% sure. So if you guys do know who started this, then just let me know down below, and I will put their uh, channel in the description box. I am off for a couple more weeks from work, so if you guys have any video requests, please let me know down below. I will try my best to get to those before I go back to work in January. So I hope you guys are having an awesome day and I will see you soon. Bye.